that's amazing. And okay. you zoom is me at the clan. That's amazing. And these bees naturally find these places to come. Do they no, we actually need to catch all of the queen bee and let them inside. Uh -huh. Okay. The thing uh, is, each of this frame, hmm, we, they can store about quarter kg of honey in each this frame. In each such box, you can have eight such frames. So, when you harvest it, you can almost get two kgs of honey from just one this much. Oh, mm. This this nobody harvests it. Okay. Now. In this hollow cylinder, honey is stored and they cover it with a very thin layer of wax which is like 0.1 to 0.2 mm thickness. Okay? When we have to extract the honey, all that we need to do is scrape off the thin layer. layer. Without disturbing, we just blow this off through the I mean, air, through the mouth and they all go off and put this in a centrifuge. It's a low speed centrifuge about um, 4 to 5 uh, rot uh, rotations per second just the honey is extracted okay and without disturbing the hive wow. and you keep it back it's already there so the bees will come and start storing the honey wow. so if you are commercial you can extra, uh, extract honey almost every month we extract it for about five months in a year and once in 45 days and that's it and deal, thus we leave it deal between uh, the bees, bees and, and us. <laughs> okay. so, so we are, we are come back with the mats again you extract how often that do you five extract? Months, five months once. Only between October to February okay. because that's when most of the flowers flowering is happening and we extract once every 45 days. But people who do it commercially, you can do it every 30 days once. Got it. Okay. It's beautiful. go into your beehive, whether, whether it be a top or, or a Langstroth or just a cardboard box, when you examine the frames, know that if the beehive is healthy and strong, it's going to work from the center out. Remember I talked about that? We should work from our hearts out. So when you examine the hive, even though I told you, take out the outside frame first so you have room to maneuver. And then, because you don't want to pull a frame out and roll bees and crush bees as you take it out. The outside frame is m almost for sure not going to have the queen on it. And that's the one you really don't want to harm. And then you move them over and you take them out. And if you go to the center, what you're going to be looking for is, in a normal pattern, there's going to be a rainbow semicircle of honey right across the top and down the sides a little bit. How can I keep bees and not make honey? You will make honey if you're, you know, if you've got bees somewhere along the line. And once you have more honey than you can eat, you're going to be saying, okay, well, what am I going to do with this honey? I say, give it away to your friends. And when you have more honey than you can give away, you suddenly say, well. There's all these, they didn't used to be all these farmer's markets. You can go to the farmer's market and you can at least pay for your equipment by trading your honey for money to buy your equipment. So there's lots of things that you can do with it. Bad. The bees will defend them, and I think what they're doing is us a favor by killing or eating the, the bees that have deformed wing virus and or things like that. They're kind of taking care of it quicker. But yeah, I haven't seen them really go into the hives too much. And, um, and, 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 uh, and ants release formic acid too, and there's something going on. Check there. your top there. You always give, check your top give for Give a glance beetles. for a queen. Look for beetles. Yep. Just be aware of them. 
so this is what Sam was saying about occupying. They're not occupying this yet. Uh -huh. But this is one of the problems with the Langstroth hive is that you can't really reduce it as yep. easily. But, but we want to make a... What, they don't really need to occupy and protect us. There's no comb on these one, two, yep. and three outside frames. Let's so there, there's no way... Like beetles can hide in that old part. comb and things like that. But now the bees are just expanding as they go. And, and they're not, they're not going to make a comb that they can't protect. It's just melted yeah. wax. And then put it. I put a board in um, water, and then melts the, that wet board on and they wax, and that kind of helps them give a. They, you don't need that, but I think it helps them make it a, a little bit more straight sometimes. You know, mm -hmm. they've gone through like a low period of their life where they've because they haven't been treated for mites for the last year or so. They've. Do you got a sting? Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't swing your arm at that. If you want to step back, I can take over. Yeah, I think I'll step back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, that's a perfect thing to do. And then you can take this smoke if you want. So this is an old frame. Mm -hmm. And you can see how um, the wax is much older in their building. This is what happens when you put a shallow frame in a deep box. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really mind. Well, this one's kind of brownish, so... She, he he's from somewhere else. Yeah, I know he's where he's probably from. from somewhere else. He's mm. from down the road in another uh, place. Uh, uh -oh. <laughs> what are you doing in there? Yeah. Okay. yeah. He's checking out your girl. Oh, we got a bunch of them running around here. Yeah. 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 Um, it's okay. Yeah, I mean, some people, yeah, it's good yeah, to have variety. The side I haven't but glanced at yet. I'll look in a spiral and I'll start on the outside of the brood and work my way in. So often I'll see her if she's on the edge. I'll see her before she runs over. There's a little doubling up a comb right here. She could be hiding under. But Actually storing it all throughout the nest, and, and as they um, as the brood hatches, um, they will end up storing it all at the top of the hive um, before winter kind of comes around. When you put the hive um, back together, um, always kind of put it there and then slide the box across and wait for the bees to escape. And that way, you don't squash any bees. So it's a very gentle way of doing it. Again, at every hive visit, I actually properize that down. At every hive visit, try and um, see um, the bottom board and if there's any hive beetle or small hive beetle there, which you can squash with. See the bees attacking it? Mm. It's a bit hard to see that bees really, coming out really the attacking it. Because oh, they, can, yeah, they can see it in the light, but they can't actually kill them. But they won't sting them? No, they can't because the, the exoskeleton, so... But see, as soon as you take away the um, the entrance where they're flying, the darkness of the hive, they get a bit more agitated. Mm -hmm. So I'll just slide that back on. Mm -hmm. So lovely bees. There's there's no bees kind of flying out to sting my hand. Can you feel the heat still? Yep. Where's it's very the queen? Warm there. Can you see the queen, Tim? I'll try and find her in a second. Oh well. Not this one. So I'll just pull out one of these frames because they're actually storing quite a bit of honey in this box and I'll eventually move it up to the top of the next. It's a good idea to remove the second frame from the end, just gently prizing it. These are quite stuck down together with propolis. The 
this frame has um, a mixture of brood and pollen. Can you see the different colour mm -hmm. pollens? Mm -hmm. Can everyone see that okay? Mm -hmm. Which is the brood oh. part, Tim, in the middle there somewhere? Yeah, the, the capped, that tan coloured. Okay. Yeah, that's good. See the capping there? Yeah. Where it's actually closed mm -hmm. over? That's the, the eggs. That's the eggs, yes. But I'll show you um, more closely on another. But there would be eggs in the open, open ones too? There'll be eggs, yeah, and just not at the ma mature stage yet. So I'll put this top box back on. Um, so the honey's in the top box? Yep. You can just smoke them away from the... This is where it's good having a helper. You just smoke around the <laughs> edges so I don't squash any bees, and there's no bees kind of... Yeah. You just smoke the bees off the... The corners there. Just smoke them on that around the front here. Thanks. Might as well, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, look at that. Oh. <coughs> and, and this is solely honey? Oh my goodness. Yeah. 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 Mm, That's pretty much all. There's a small hive beetle there. How much does that weigh? Um, about three or four kilos. That's um, that's the capped honey, that kind of snowy white. It's gone a little bit darker throughout the season. You can see how bees are actually gorging. See how they're gorging in the open cells of honey there, dunking their heads in. So that's that's unripened honey. That's fresh nectar that <coughs> has to yet has yet to be capped and ripen that stored ripened honey. What decrees whether it's stored, ripened? When it's full basically, yeah. and then yeah. it's capped with beeswax. Uh -huh. Does its viscosity change? Uh, it's th much thicker when it's Is stored. It? Oh. Yeah. You can see here how there's larvae Kind of wiggling around. Here are the young worker bees. These are some of the youngest that tend the brood. Get it closer if you can. Okay. Yeah. So these are the larvae in there, and you can kind of see they're chilling in the cells. Um, none are emerging right now. Oop, looks like I smushed them. And then they also aren't on the other side. Um, this is capped right here. And unfortunately, we've also got honey intermixed with our brood, and this little piece is buzzing right now. <laughs> but this must have been where the queen started laying.